Hey everyone, Cody here. And today I want to talk about, well, actually I wanted to answer a an email that I got from a guy named Brian. And I don't know if he wants me to share his full name, so I won't. But anyway, he sent me a great email asking me how to kind of get into doing the abstract art that I do and just some general uh, questions. So today I kind of want to answer those questions because I keep getting a lot of the same repeat questions. And yes, I will be doing a painting video very shortly after this probably tomorrow or the next day, uh, near future, I promise. Okay, so what I wanna talk about today is three things. The canvas that I use and kind of the differences between them, uh, the materials or the, well, the paint that I use, and then lastly, the materials for the different types of methods that I use. So just to kind of break it down, to give you some ideas and really go over it real briefly. I won't make this a super long video. I'll try to cover all this stuff as succinctly as I can. So let's first talk about the canvas. Well. There's main, two main types of canvas. There's un, there's rolled or unstretched canvas, and then there is um, actual stretched canvas. Now, if you don't know anything about stretching canvas onto a stretcher bar or framing it, um, then I'm gonna tell you to go ahead and buy some stretched canvas. This is something that I got from Michael's. You can get them from Amazon. You can get them uh, from a local craft store. I think you can even get them at a department store, or not a department store, but like Walmart, Target, some kind of hobby store. So a stretch canvas already comes on the frame. You don't have to do anything. You just make your painting. Now, the difference in the two and kind of the main difference in, in how you would apply the paint if you're doing abstract painting is just that if you use un, you know, unstretched canvas uh, or rolled canvas, the flat, so this right here, it doesn't come on the frame. So you have to do one of two things. You either have to stretch it over a frame once the painting is painted, or you just sell it as is. So this this rolled painting here, I, I would just sell this as is. So you could, you know, literally roll this out uh, on the ground, or you could tack it up on the wall, depending on the style that you're going for. Um, create your painting, and then once it's fully dry, you could roll it back up and, it, and it's fine. Um, and then again, you could either stretch this over a frame if you want to sell it that way, or you could just sell it just like this, rolled, and then you ship it to your customer, and then they can choose to either hang it up as like a tapestry, uh, put it into a frame, or stretch it over to uh, you know, a wooden frame or stretcher bars. So you could kind of leave that with them. I've sold paintings like this, so uh, it's, it's cheaper to store them like this, it's cheaper to make them like this, and then just sell them at a lower cost, because you're not paying as much for shipping, you're not paying as much for the frame itself. Um, so this is an option, especially if you're gonna do Pollock style paintings especially, because this you can actually just lay on the ground and you can make your painting and then you can roll it up once it's done. Um, now, if you're making it for yourself and you don't really wanna deal with uh, stretching it afterwards or, or hanging it up as a tapestry, then just go ahead and buy a large canvas on Amazon or from a canvas, uh, sorry, a, a craft store or hobby store like Michael's, Joann's, uh, something like that. Just go ahead and buy a large canvas and then make your painting on that canvas. So it really comes down to how much work you want to do it and how you want to approach it. I've done it both ways, sold them both stretched and unstretched. Um, so it's really up to you. Now, I will say for larger paintings, I actually tend to do uh, the rolled paintings, the larger paintings, uh, flat, so on the rolled canvas. Uh, that way it's easier for me to ship it. Um, so I generally do larger paintings like that, and then paintings that are like four feet or smaller, um, I'll do on stretch canvas if I intend to sell it, because it's easier to ship it if it's four feet or less. So that's kind of my little uh, distinction right there. So under four feet, usually like three feet and below, um, stretch canvas. Uh, if it's above four feet, usually I'll do it on unstretched or rolled canvas and then just sell it like that. So that's kind of how I do it. Next, let's talk about um, the paint that I use and, and kind of I get asked this a lot. So I, I do a, a few acrylic paintings, not a whole lot, but so I use basics only because I don't sell a lot of the acrylic paintings I do. So if you're wondering why I don't use high-end uh, acrylic paint for the paintings that I do, especially the scrape paintings, uh, it's because I don't sell a lot of them. I usually just make them for the for the channel, actually, um, or for myself or for friends or whatever. I, I don't sell a lot of those paintings because the problem with basics is that it's this this particular one is a, a student grade. Uh, what that means is it's full of a lot of binders. And so when it dries, there's there's two issues with uh, having a lot of binders in the paint as opposed to a lot of pigment. So there's, there's two kind of main components in, in acrylic paint 
really in any paint, but mostly acrylic, uh, there's binders and then there's pigments. So the pigments what actually gives it color and then the binders is what holds all the chemicals together. So it holds that color together. Um, what you'll tend to find in cheaper and in student grade paints is that they're full of more binder than they are pigment. So what that means is uh, twofold. One, when it dries, uh, you actually lose a lot of that color. So the way that it looks in the tube is not necessarily the way that it looks once it dries. It loses that. It doesn't have a high color fastness. So the color fastness is how well it retains that color once it dries. Student grade paints like this or uh, cheaper acrylics tend to not have a high color fastness. So you have to go with a professional grade. Now, a lot of companies have different levels of paint. Um, so, you, you know, you, Liquitex has higher end paints, just not the basics. The basics is literally kind of the student grade. You can use it, you can get away with it, you can sell it, you can do whatever you want. And I know people who use this as their, like, as a professional painter. Um, but just, just keep that in mind. Now, the other part of that is that when you're diluting this type of paint, if you use paint with a lot of binders, you can't thin it very much or else it starts to break apart. And those binders will literally separate from the paint and they'll, there'll be like little chunks in the paint if you thin it too much. The other issue that you run into using cheaper uh, paint is that if you thin it too much, if you do say a Pollock style painting where you're just kind of flinging it all over and stuff, when it dries, uh, if you have big splotches, sometimes they tend to crack because again, it's, it's held with a bunch of binders. That water breaks those binders apart. Once it dries, it cracks apart. And you find this with really cheap paint, especially. Like if you use like the, the barrel paints or whatever they're called, you can get from like uh, the, the, ho the hobby stores or Walmart. And it's like the little, you know, $1 paints or whatever for an ounce. Yeah, those things, especially stuff like that. You can use it again. But once you thin that down and, and throw it on that canvas, once it dries, it tends to crack because the binders have separated. So just keep that in mind. You can use whatever you want. You can even try this. And I, what I always recommend to people is if you're gonna do acrylic paint, um, something like this, uh, for like a Pollock style painting, start small, test it out on something, you know, just a small canvas or, you know, some small pieces of paper, cardboard, something, right? Just, just test it out first before you go on and try to make a large project like like what I do. Um, so that's that's acrylic. As far as oil goes, I don't use oil, um, so I really don't have much to say about it. I've used it like maybe two or three times, but it sounds like somebody's here. Anyway, uh, so I don't really use oil, so I can't really speak to that. The paint that I tend to use the most, and this is kind of where I shine because I, I do gloss enamel, and most people don't. Gloss enamel is basically high gloss house paint. Sometimes it'll say Al-Qaeda paint right there on the paint can. I don't know where the little camera thing is, but, um, yeah, so Alkyde paint, um, but pretty much any of the paint that you buy, it'll either say like high gloss or gloss enamel. That's that's what it'll say on the paint can. So that's the type of paint I use. I use water-based gloss enamel. There is oil-based. Um, if you're going to use oil-based, you just use mineral spirits or thinner to thin it out. If you're going to use water-based like I do, I can thin it with water. And it, and it doesn't usually have an issue. But again, there are cheaper paints and there are better paints. So I've used one from Ace Hardware that was a Clark and Kensington. And when I used that paint and I thinned it out and then did a painting with it, it cracked once it dried. So again, the quality of the paint matters. So the paint that I use, it's like $16 a can for that small thing. Um, and then like a large one is like $50, $50 or $60 or something like that. So it's expensive, but it's worth it. That paint is the best paint I've ever used, um, hands down. So Again, you can get gloss and amble usually from a hardware store or paint store. You just kind of have to check your local area, I couldn't tell you. You can check on Amazon, but I haven't found a lot of results for it. You can find some, but you know, just, just make sure you pay attention to if it's water-based or oil, um, and that will tell you how you can you know, kind of go about that. And it doesn't really matter which one you use. Again, just don't mix them because oil and water don't mix. We all know that. So just make sure that you use one type of paint for the whole painting. I've, I've accidentally mixed both and it like literally, I threw one layer on and it was oil and I didn't even know it. And then I threw a water-based paint on top of it and it just splashed right off. Like it literally just slid off the painting. I'm not even kidding. It was, it was actually kind of funny, but anyway, so just keep that in mind. Um, all right, so that's it for the paint. Lastly, let's talk about the materials I use to create the uh, styles that I, I run with. So there's kind of four, um, there's really four 
types of styles that I do. I do the the action paintings or you know the gestural abstraction or Jackson Pollock, whatever you want to call it. I do the action type paintings. Um, and then I do scraped paintings like Gerard Richter. I do line paintings, which I've just kind of found over time. And I really like line paintings. They, they're very calming, relaxing. And I'll show you an example if you haven't seen them. So this is an example of a line painting. Like you can kind of see that it's literally just these really calm, relaxing lines. Um, so we'll talk about that. And lastly uh, is the dabbed or fractal or blotted abstract paintings that I kind of found by myself just just messing around you know came up with that uh that technique and i really am impressed with it so let's talk about the materials so first off let's talk about the action painting paintings that i do the jackson pollock style um mostly what i use is kind of these three tools right here so i use the paint sticks a lot because i feel like they give you a lot of control so when you're kind of throwing the paint on the canvas you really kind of you know get control with you know the stick it's got a lot of control to it so i tend to use that um, and I'll just throw it right out of the can. Uh, next, I use hardened paintbrushes. You can see that's hard. Um, what this will do is give you really thick lines. Um, so I'll use hardened paintbrushes. And then lastly, I'll just use paint sticks. Um, so I'll use the back of a paint stick to create thinner, more kind of descript lines. So if I'm making thinner lines, I'll use that. So those are the tools that I usually use for the Pollock style paintings. Next, for the scraped paintings um, that are inspired by Gerard Richter, um, I will use these two. So I will use these plastic trowels. Got this from Ace Hardware, $2. Um, and then I got these little uh, scrapers, like drywall scrapers, um, again, like $2. So these are literally things that you can get for a couple bucks and do some easy scraped paintings. Uh, next, for the line paintings, again, the, the painting that I showed you, I use these little edge painters right here. Again, like a dollar or two from hardware store, paint store, whatever. Um, and it's got these little tiny bristles on it, and that's what creates those really thin lines. Um, just put the paint on one side, pull it across, and, and that's it. You know, it makes these really cool paintings. So again, a couple dollars, and they're like called edge painters or wall painters, corner painters, something like that. Lastly, for the fractal or dab paintings, I use one of two tools usually. I will use corrugated plastic. This is just corrugated plastic of a, like a little sign that someone threw out cut it into a square, and I literally just kind of dab this little bad boy into the paint and move it around the painting, and that's how I make my fractal paintings. And then lately, I've been using plastic, so you can actually use some of those bags that you get from the grocery store, kind of curl it up, and just kind of dab it over and over again, and, and it makes a, you know, a really interesting painting. Like, this is probably, this is one of the most recent ones, and I'm really actually proud of this painting. Like, it turned out pretty good. Uh, so, I, again, I love black, white, and gold. Those are that's kind of my favorite color scheme. Uh, black, white, silver, and gold, money. Uh, but anyway, using those color schemes um, and those tools, that's how I created that piece of abstract. Um, and that's pretty much it. I don't really do poured paintings that often. I've tried off and on, and I just feel like it's a waste of paint, so I don't like to do them. Um, so I don't really do poured paintings. There's tons of channels out there that do, so if you really want to learn how to do poured paintings, I am not the place to do it. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, I think I've covered everything. The only last thing um, that I, I, I talked to uh, Brian about in my email was what paint I use for what uh, paintings. So I tend to use the acrylic for the scraped paintings like I mentioned earlier because it's easier to stack the layers. However, sometimes I do use gloss enamel for abstract paintings for the scraped ones. You just kind of have to go at it a certain way where you really are doing one layer at the time and making sure that you put it across the entire tool and then bringing it across. So I can use that, but for everything else, for the dabbed paintings, the lime paintings, and the Jackson Pollock style paintings, I use the gloss enamel. So, and I, I do thin it down just a little bit um, for the Pollock style paintings, just, just a tiny bit of water, a little bit goes a long way. And if you don't wanna thin out the whole thing, just put some of the can into a cup, add a little bit of water there, and then just start Know, throwing it on the canvas. Uh, otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. Hopefully I answered all of your questions. If you have questions about how to kind of get into abstract art or abstract painting like I do with these action paintings, hopefully that answers all your questions. If you have any other questions about getting into doing the type of art that I do, leave a comment in the, in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it as quick as possible. And that's it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was helpful. And again, I will come out be coming out with some 
uh, painting videos pretty soon. And I'm thinking that because I've been getting quite a bit of subscribers, um, we'll be doing a Pollock style painting at 2250. So when we reach 2250, I'll probably do another Pollock style painting. Until then, uh, just other paintings uh, in the meantime. So thanks guys, appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care, God bless, bye guys.